So I have um, a video here. I actually think this is, you know, a bunch of old news clips spliced together to show you what happened in, uh, in 1987, 1988. Joe Biden has run for president a number of times. And every time he got his ass handed to him on a silver platter, um, it was bad. It was bad. Now, thankfully for him, like, people don't really remember what happened the last times. They just, now he's just kind of viewed as like, oh, that was Obama's VP and I know his name. So therefore, in polls, you know, many relatively apolitical Democratic voters are like, yeah, I guess Biden, sure, no problem. He's got that like default lead, I call it. Default support. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to refresh your memory on, I won't, I won't get into the 07, 08 primary. Joe Biden got obliterated in that primary. I don't know. I don't know if he even hit 3%. Like that was the Hillary Clinton, uh, Obama. Joe Biden wasn't even in the last final three. It was Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and John Edwards were the final three. And then Biden was like way on the fringes and just gay attracted like almost no support so that's the story of that race is just he was irrelevant he was a non-factor and then Obama picked him for VP particularly because Obama and his team thought hey man we need like an old white dude because we don't want like you know working class white people to be afraid to vote for a black dude so go with like you know middle class Joe or whatever um now but in 1987 1988 when he ran he dropped out in disgrace. Like, there was a big national scandal, everybody was talking about it, and then eventually he was like, alright, you got me, and he dropped out. Now, what was the scandal, or the scandals? Well, you're about to find out. Take a look. Democratic presidential candidate Joseph Biden today faces a controversy. Three weeks ago, at a debate at the Iowa State Fair, he used phrases identical to those delivered by British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock. Biden seemed to be claiming Kinnock's vision and life as his own. Why is it that my wife is sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Why is Gladys the first woman in her family in a thousand generations to be able to get the university? My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football. Eight hours underground and then come up and play football. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. There was no platform upon which they could stand. The notion that every thought or notion or idea you'd have to go back and find and attribute to someone, I think is, quite frankly, uh, ludicrous. The problem here is that Senator Biden told his audience he'd just been thinking about these things and he failed to give any credit at all to his famous British speechwriter. You know, I was thinking on the way over here. <laughs> now that's a little too much because, as you point out, what's behind the words, what's there? And a lot of people, the rap on Biden has always been that it's just a surface. I should have said, to paraphrase Neil Kinnock, it's the only time I didn't in all the times I've ever used it. But CBS News found a tape of a second instance. It reappeared in the New York Times with a new charge, that Biden had appropriated a famous litany from the late Robert Kennedy about what the gross national product cannot measure. It cannot measure the health of our children. The health of our children. The quality of our education. The quality of their education. The joy of their play. For the joy of their play. Biden gave Kennedy no credit. He has also quoted or paraphrased John Kennedy, Hubert Humphrey, and British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock, all without credit. Joseph Biden admitted today that he committed plagiarism when he was in law school. He said it was a mistake, but that it was unintentional. He quoted five pages of someone else's work without proper citation. I've done some dumb things. Now I'll do dumb things again. He was given an F. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been dumb. To the political community in Washington, it all seems of a piece. Plagiarism at law school, plagiarism on the stump. The great communicator. Strike that. The great imitator. You don't steal verbatim. Uh, or when you do, as he did 99% of the time, you give credit. Biden's critics say he sells himself as a man whose words and visions can inspire a new generation in politics. But if the thoughts, phrases, and visions really belong to others, it's a form of false advertising. Is it a wise idea, though, to take something that personal, anyway, from another politician and try and appropriate it to your own campaign? I think it was a stupid thing to uh, appropriate uh, material that was really very personal that was someone else's. Most people didn't know who 
he was. You know, Joe Biden, Biden, and now they're going to say, oh, yeah, he's the guy who plagiarized. That's a lot of people. First. Politically, that's <laughs> devastating. These clips are devastating. He looks like a Joe Biden wind-up doll with somebody else's words coming out. If they're going to do things that are stupid as well as immoral, then they're probably too dumb to have the job of president. Voters are going to have to decide whether he was dishonest or dumb. Senator Joseph Biden may have more explaining to do. The new questions stem from With taped remarks of, of Biden States. during an April campaign appearance in New Hampshire. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and, in fact, ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. And I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. Joe Biden was victimized by the truth. Bye-bye, Biden. He may not know it yet, but I think this is very diff going to be very difficult for him to recover. Is Joe Biden dead meat, yes or no? I think so. Bob? Terminal condition. Terminal. Eleanor. Yes, unless he comes in third in Iowa. <laughs> Morton. Dying. That was fascinating to see all that, all those old news reports. Um, by the way, I believe it was, I believe it was Sean King who kind of went back and, and found all these clips and then put it together. So that's a, that's a lot of work because that's a lot of clips. So uh, shout out to him on that. Now, I actually have a weird um, take on some of this stuff. So, I actually think, at least for the first three quarters of that clip, I thought that, like, a lot of the scandals were just really tepid scandals. Like, the whole plagiarism thing, I was like, okay, but what if his speechwriter was the one who plagiarized the, you know, the Labor Party speech or the RFK speech? Like, what if it was his speechwriter and his speechwriter gave him the speech and then Biden reads it? And, you know, then people flip it on Biden and they're like, hey, man, why did you plagiarize it? And he's like, I'm, it, it was it was Craig. He's my speechwriter. <laughs> so my, honestly, my first thoughts on it were like, I don't really care that much about the plagiarism thing because it just strikes me as such a quaint thing in, in, in at least in the context of modern politics. Like we're so used to scandals that are 80 times worse than that on a daily basis that that barely even registered for me. I was like, oh, that's it? Like, that's all it took for the nation to turn on him? I mean, guys, Fareed Zakaria, uh, I think he admitted to plagiarism, and he still has a show on CNN, and, like, nobody cares. People are just like, oh, yeah, whatever happened. It's oh, like a youthful indiscretion. No big deal. It is what it is. So that one, I just, it wasn't registering. I was like, whatever. But the part that I was like, oh, <laughs> was um, when he gave those, like, really long, detailed lies about his, uh, his time in college, he's like, I got a law school full scholarship, top, finished top half of my class, three degrees, and they were like, actually, he was, uh, what was it, 76 out of 83 or 85 or something like that, so bottom half of his class, only one degree, not three degrees, um, and then when, he's, <laughs> when he gets caught on all that, and then he goes out there and he's like, I'd love to compare my IQ to yours, I think I'd do well in that. <laughs> Bro, what are you doing? Take the L, dog. Take the L. <laughs> That's such a Trumpian response. Like, hey, bro, here's like eight demonstrable lies you were caught in. He's like, uh, but I'm like a very stable genius, okay? <laughs> That's what that was. The, but my IQ is actually really high. Oh, my God, Joe, stop it. Reel it in a little bit, bro. Reel it in. The thing that's so funny about those is that it's such gratuitous lies. So, in other words, like, nobody gave a fuck that you were 76 out of 83 or 85. Um you know, in your class, nobody would have cared. Nobody would have cared that you had one degree instead of three. Nobody cares. You Even if you didn't go to college, nobody would care. Nobody would hold that against you. But when you go out there and say, oh, I was top half of my class and I had the full scholarship and I had three degrees and like all of that is not true and all of that is fact check. Well, then it's like you put yourself in a position where you look like a dipshit. You know what I mean? Like if you just, if you just didn't say those lies, everything would have been fine, but he lied anyway. So 
guys, I mean, listen, the takeaway here is that's super Trumpian. Like that is super, you know, all ego, all narcissism. I'm going to create this, you know, cartoon version of myself in my own head and then project it onto the world. That's pathological liar shit. Now, listen, again, I like to think I'm being fair and, and if anything, overly kind in this segment, because I just told you through three quarters of that clip, I was still like, is that it? That's just a plagiarism thing. That's it. That's all they got on him. Because again, in today's, like, imagine if there was a scandal that broke today that Trump plagiarized. The level to which that I would not give a fuck and that would would barely even register on the national radar is immeasurable. The media might try to make it, oh my God, Trump into plagiarism. I'd be like, yeah, you know, but I'm pretty sure starving Venezuela is worse. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about that? I'm pretty sure 7 million people losing their health insurance under him because of his policies. I'm sure that's worse. I'm sure 78% of the country living paycheck to paycheck is worse. I'm sure his tax cut, which 83% of the benefits went to the top 1%. I'm pretty sure that's worse. I'm sure that, you know, the the drone war and the massive increase in drones and, and high civilian casualty rate, pretty sure that's worse. Pretty sure the random assassination of an Iranian general, which almost brought us into an all-out hot war, pretty sure that's worse. So the plagiarism thing would barely fucking register. I'd be like, whatever, move on. I'm not surprised by that at all. That's how the kind of guy Trump is. In the case of Biden, honestly, my reaction is kind of similar to that part. It's like, yeah, maybe a speechwriter did it. Maybe, like, it's just not that terrible. But once you start, once you get into the pathological lies about his college record, I'm like, oh, okay. So that's the point. That's why Sean King put all this together. It's just to be like, hey, just so everybody knows. Trumpian pathological liar, <laughs> especially the IQ part. Why would you say that? I, uh, yeah, sure. I was caught lying uh, in a million ways, but, uh, I bet my IQ is higher than yours. Very stable genius. <laughs> so anyway, um, there you go. Uh, what I would caution to people though. Now, listen, I'm, I'm a news and politics show. So like, this is a story today. I have to talk about it. It is what it is. But what I would caution, um, you know, people engaged and involved in this primary is, this is, this ain't it. Like, you don't, you don't have to talk about this as our main line of argument against Joe Biden. Okay. You talk about policy. You talk about, you know, uh, his support of the bankruptcy bill, which really crushed students because that, you know, made it so that you can't file for bankruptcy on student loan debt. And it was a very, that piece of legislation was massively biased in favor of the uh, big financial institutions and against regular people. So you talk about that. You talk about Joe Biden wanting to cut Social Security and being upfront with that and talking about it endlessly, at least back in the day. Now he's pretending like he didn't say it, but he's wrong. Talk about that. Talk about his vote for the Iraq war. You know, that's gigantic. Talk about his support for outsourcing deals. These are the things you talk about because these are the substantive things about policy and record that really land a lot harder than any of this stuff does. So that's my word of warning for everybody. Again, I'm a politics show, so I like have to talk about the news of the day, and this is the news of the day. Um, but I would say there are better things to focus on, and we can keep our eye on the ball, especially so close to Iowa.